MLSE shakes things up for TFC and the Boatman. Is it a warning shot to Brendan Shanahan? We'll discuss that and our Friday five pack of Toronto's biggest modern day rivals. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Well, we're back to some winning ways here in the city of Toronto, right? You got the Argonauts with a victory last night. You had the Blue Jays coming off a, a victory. Things are looking up and up for the boys in Toronto. It is. It's nice to see some t- No, obviously for the Blue Jays to get another series win. Uh, you also have, obviously, an Argos team that lost two in a row and finally found a way to beat an undefeated Montreal team. So we will take a Toronto win over a Montreal team anytime here yes. on the podcast. Yes, we will. And we'll we'll get to that. Our Friday five pack of the day. And this is going to be a new segment that we're going to do every Friday uh, for the rest of the summer. We're going to come up with a new power ranking called the Friday five pack. Uh, so we'll the, today's is the Maple Leafs five biggest modern day rivals. So we'll get to that list in a little bit. But there's some big news in, uh, in not necessarily Maple Leaf land, but MLSE um, fired Bill Manning, the president of uh, essentially he was in, he's the Shanahan of Toronto FC, uh, and, and the R goes to a little bit of an extent, but mainly the president of, uh, of TFC and he gone, he has been, uh, handed his walk-in papers. Um, and it kind of, isn't that surprising when you look at how bad, TFC has been over the last couple of years. It's it's pretty pretty garbage how you know things have really turned out considering how good they were for for a very long time. I mean, this was a team that went to three MLS Cup championships, um, you know, in the mid to late teens. Uh, but since then, not really given the city or the team or the fan base any amount of hope. They tried, they signed all those Italians, and sadly it has not really come to fruition and it's cost bill manning uh his job and i guess the the question that we now have here and how we relate it to the maple leafs is this is a warning shot to brendan shanahan you better do something and win this year because if you don't come up with victories and tangible results you're gonna be looking for a job just like bill manning well, in, in f- when it comes to Bill Manning, like the uh, the nail in the coffin was TFC losing to a Canadian Premier League team. Oh, so embarrassing, man! So embarrassing. What's the NHL equivalent like? That that's like losing to an, to an American League team. Like yeah. maybe even ECHL team. Like uh, like let's be honest. I, that I'm even... pretty sure. I mean, someone can correct me. Like the salary for like half, like half of the Italian, one of those Italian, Sydney Air Benedeschi pays for this whole squad in the CPL, yeah, which is where Hamilton plays. It's tough. It's tough. And uh, yeah, it cost Bill Manning his job. And look, he had a long time uh, with yeah. the, with, with MLSE and with TFC, nine years as the president there. There was a lot of success. You know, obviously you talk about going to three championships in, in four years. Like I, I wish the Maple Leafs had one championship run in four years. They went to three MLS cups. They ended up taking one home. There was a parade a little bit. We did get to celebrate a championship. Uh, so that was awesome. Um, I mean, the, they, they won a great cup also with Bill Manning in in uh, in the fold there with MLSC with the Argos. So there was at least tangible success with Bill Manning. Right. And obviously it hasn't gone well post covid have not been able to kind of recover from uh, the pre covid success that they had had. Uh, and, and ultimately it, it cost them. When you look at the Maple Leafs and it's like you're going to fire Bill Manning after all this success that he has had with the team, uh, but that he decided that he was going to keep Brendan Shanahan. 
And I do wonder, and, and we had this conversation, you know, back when Keith Pelly, that's what I mean by he, when Keith Pelly took over as the new president of MLSE, we did you know, kind of acknowledge maybe it was a bit too soon to make a rash decision on Brendan Shanahan. And he wanted, you know, a little bit more than two weeks on the job to have to make that type of decision. Um, well, he's had a little bit longer, obviously, on the job. And, and he saw what, what Bill Manning was doing with the with the Reds, did not like it, decided to pull the trigger. And now I wonder how short of a leash Brendan Shanahan truly has going into this year. I mean, with with Manning, at least there was tangible results and success and wins and the championship having to come close to that with the Maple Leafs and the Shanna plan. I think it is also Keith Pelly recognizing that yes, there has been past success, but if you look and if you talk to any of these fans right now, especially I've talked to some guys I know who are TFC season ticket holders. I've also talked to a lot of Argos fans and it's just like, it doesn't matter what they've done in the past because the present where things have gone to, especially for TFC has gone so bad that it, it, it kind of, it, it kind of just makes all that success from beforehand seem like so long ago. Yeah. And, and I think this is goes back to Keith Pelly's con- press conference when he says there's going to be no complacency here. Right now, that doesn't mean that there's going to be immediate changes you said, but, if if man if if Pelly realizes that things are stagnant, things are not moving in the direction he believes it should be, he is going to make moves. He just showed that, right? Like they Bill Manning brought in John Herdman, like the the coach of the Canadian national team. Now the Canadian national team seems to have gotten, you know, they seem to have moved on pretty well with with their new coach over there. Yeah, with Jesse Marsh, but like. That was like a last ditch effort for Manning there to try to get, in a in a way, kind of save his job because I I, I obviously didn't hear of any concerns about his future, but you saw the writing on the wall when things were going so bad. Now, where Brendan Shanahan obviously has a little bit more of a maybe a little more of a touch is that he this, this Leafs team has just found a way to at least make the playoffs and look good in the regular season that there wasn't that dire straight to make that immediate change, but, and this goes back to what Kel, what Pelly said in the press conference, which is we're not just here to sell, you know, when he made the line to sell jerseys, we're here to win a championship. Yep. I think at some point that realization that if this team does not reach that ultimate goal, he's not afraid to make a change. Well, and and I wonder too now. I mean, if he's if he's here to make bold bold moves, which we do hope is the case, you know, hold people accountable. You know, finally, it looks like Bill Manning's being held accountable for how south it's gone for uh, TFC. And look, it's 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 pretty clear and evident to me that the Shannon plan uh, was was the person like Brendan Shanahan and the Shannon plan was really the voice behind the we can and we will right like we can mm-hmm. sign these guys and we will win with all of these guys because it, it felt like kyle dubas was ready to move in a different direction last year and that's ultimately what led to his departure they didn't see eye to eye on that and shanahan said actually we're just not going to renew you we'll bring in brad true living and you know stay status quo run it back and here they are running it back again with the same core but i wonder bill manning like if if things don't go well this year and they run it back and nothing happens and, and they continue to just, you know, stagnant year. Once again, there's no doubt in my mind. I, I have a feeling that he's going to look at it. And he's going to say, all right, Brandon, you couldn't make the right decisions. You're gone, gone. And he's going to force the hand of uh tree living who probably will remain even after Shanahan's gone uh, to, to trade one of those guys. Like, I feel like he's got the balls to go in there as the president and be hands on enough, be like, Hey, we need the change. Like you just got to make it happen, make the change, make the trade. Someone's got to go. Right. And it might even be a lot easier since the contracts are going to be up and it's just maybe end up being a matter of we're not signing off on these contracts for these players. Cause we don't think you can win with them. That's also something that could end up happening. I think that's, I think that's the big one. There is I'd like to see now, first off, we do not want to see the Leafs be in a position where no. it's the same thing over again. Let's make that clear. But if they are, we're playing the what ifs here. 
if they are. I I think it, it would be so tough for Pelly to try to sell the board because, again, that's now his job is to sell the board and for Shanahan to sell the board. Will sell Pelly to hopefully sell the board that his direction is the right direction. It like the this will be one of the easier jobs for Keith Pelly if they don't reach that ultimate goal that they're looking for. He can say, You've had this opportunity since 2014, 10 years, yeah. it'll be 11 years. 10 There's- years, he's filtered through three coaches, he's now onto his third general manager, yeah. and he's only had one playoff round win. Yep. One round. He's won in 10 years. That's what the Shannon plan has yielded. And it wasn't even a great second round. It's like they won round one, and then they just decided to, the, the controller died in round two. They were terrible. Yeah, so th- it would be very, like, when you look at now the chopping block of, like, who's next, like, who's got the hottest seat, it is Brandon Shannon because Masai Ujiri he speaks more of a, of a guy who's ready to put the Raptors back together. And he's got a little bit, he's got that window where I've won a championship. Sure. Right? He's also made the tough decision to trade OG to trade yeah. Siakam, That's, right? Like yeah. he, he made those decisions already. So like he's gone through that where now they're on the other end of the, the, the rebuild. And, you know, he needs to be afforded a couple more years to see, how it kind of plays out. So absolutely. He, he's willing to make those bold moves. And I, I, if I guarantee if Pelly went up to Shanahan and said, all right, things didn't go well, what are you prepared to do? And if Shanahan's going to once again, sit on his hands, like we've seen him do, Keith Pelly is not going to stand for that. He's going to want change. For sure. Yeah. You would think though, like realistically, if like put yourself in Shanahan's shoes, if, if Keith Pelly, let's say, I don't know, things aren't going well three months into the year and you know it it looks like Barube is just frustrated with Marner and those guys just aren't really clashing and things aren't going well and he goes up to Brandon and he's like you trade him or I trade him and if I have to trade him that means you're out of a job pal he probably makes the move realistically so um you know I, I would imagine Shani would do will choose you know having to make that decision yep. over his job I would, I would think, but um, hopefully it doesn't get to that, obviously. But I do believe, just to kind of go back and the, the overarching question and, and comment about, you know, the firing of Bill Manning, I bet you Brendan Shanahan today, when he read that or when he got word that that was happening, he realized right then and there, okay, I'm kind of next in the firing line. Yep. So I, I better make sure that this team really and- does something this year to save my ass or else I'm next. And I'll add one more part to that. TFC and the Argos are both in their seasons, in the middle of their seasons. Like the Argos kind of just started. TFC is they're roughly in the same path in terms of their seasons. And they didn't care. They got rid of the president. And basically mm-hmm. they said the top two executives, the GMs, are going to report directly to him. He wasn't worried about, oh, do I have to find someone to have it ready to go in place? No, I'll, I'll handle it. I'm going to make the move. I think that's something to keep in mind when it comes to Shanahan. Do they wait until the end? Like, no, I think he will make the decision when he deems it's appropriate. If that's yeah. where he has to do it. Yeah. He's not going to do it this summer. I mean, it's not going to yeah. like, at all. Like if anything, it'll, it'll be next year. Like next summer is when that, uh, when that decision will come through. Um, if again, if it's another first round exit, he's got, he gone. He's gone. Like that's that's just that's that's the way it's gonna be. His job is on the line this year. Uh, I, I I truly truly believe that. Not there's finally someone in place in that role. Keith Pelly, the president, someone who Brennan Shanahan has to answer to. Um, the accountability is finally there for him. So it's it's you know playoff run or bust essentially. I think for the Shanahan plan this year, we'll see how it goes. All right, on the other side, we're going to debut a new segment that we're going to make into a weekly segment throughout the offseason. It's the Friday Five Pack, and this week we're taking a look at the Maple Leafs' five biggest rivals in the modern day. So we'll be doing that, and we'll give you our thoughts on our Five Pack on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Price on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from receipt, and the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. They've got last minute deals, which allows you to save up to 60% off buying last minute for sporting events, concerts, comedy, theater events whatever you're looking to do. And they've got the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem the code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you here as we are each and every weekday on the Locked On Leafs pod where you can find it wherever you get your podcast from, Spotify, iTunes, wherever, and also uh, watch the video format of the podcast up on YouTube. Uh, so it's the off season and we got to try and, you know, get, get creative, you know, try and get creative as we do bring you shows each and every day all throughout the off season. Most people take time off. Nope. Not us, not us, Dave, not here at the Locked On Network. We're bringing the daily coverage uh, all throughout the month of July. So um, we're going to debut a new segment we're going to do each and every Friday called the Friday Five Pack. Uh, and we're going to take a look uh, at basically a power ranking, a top five ranking. Um, and this week we're taking a look at the Maple Leafs' five biggest modern day rivals. Um, so there's a list that we both consensusly came to an agreement on. There was... There are some slight, uh, slight differing, differing opinions at the top. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But we'll start at number five. We both agreed that the Edmonton Oilers are currently the fifth biggest rival for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, why do you think that they uh, are justified to come in at number five? They only play each other twice a year. And both those games, like the anticipation, the hype around it, you got McDavid versus Matthews. And I, I, I just remember those games always being, there's just an intensity that you don't see in the other games that the Leafs play against. You know, even if you go look at the Canucks, the Jets to a certain degree because of that one time. Well, the Jets. better than beating the Leafs? Yeah, exactly. Logan Stanley nonsense. Then yeah. they never won to uh, beat the Leafs ever since. So last laugh went to the Leafs there. But in like the words, in the words of DX, our boy Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Very nice. That's why you gotta watch the pot on YouTube because you have no yeah. idea what I did just there. But uh, if you know anything about wrestling. You know what I did. Oh yeah. Continue. And and so like I, even this this year, watching those games, like it was clear these two teams very much do not like each. I mean, no team likes each other, but like, there is a genuine hate between these two teams when they go up against each other. And the fan bases, right? Like there's yeah. a genuine <laughs> hatred between the fan bases, oh, right? Yeah. I mean. Everyone was trying to clamor Edmonton, Canada's team, and people in Toronto were like, absolutely not. No chance. You had guys here. like Dave right saying, here. go Panthers. He went and bought a Panthers uniform, went and bought a Sam Bennett uniform and put it on his back, and they also said on the back, screw Zach Hyman. That's literally what Dave did, and I don't know why. He hates the Oilers that much, so... That's uh, that's why we had the Oilers at number five. It's there's on the ice, off the ice. There's hatred, cross country hatred, and uh, I think you you said it best. There's always an intensity to these games. People know it's marquee, right? Like that's hockey night in Canada. You know that's that. Those are marquee games that everyone kind of circles at the beginning of the year. Matthews versus McDavid. Let's see it. So uh, and they haven't disappointed either. They've been no. they've been quality hockey games too. Also, Oilers are just stealing all the Leafs free agents, right? Jack Campbell, yeah. Cody Cece, Tyson yeah. Berry, Zach Hyman, there you Connor go. Brown. I was like, you got you, <laughs> it took you four players to get the Zach Hyman? Like, no, I wanted to get through the scrubs first, then get yeah. to Zach Hyman. True. Because there's actually right. one that hurt the team the most. The other ones are just like, technically, Connor Brown didn't leave the Leafs right. to go, but 
He was a former Leaf. There's there's ties. Very true. Very true. And now the Leafs are just like former Canucks guys. It's kind of what yeah. they're what they're all up to. Now they're just signing all guys who played for the Canucks once upon a time. Yep. Um, OEL. They signed Tanev. Who else did they bring in? There was someone else I thought maybe who they brought in from the Canucks uh, before. Anyways. Um, mm, Maybe not. I'm blank. I'm blank. Just this offseason. Tan Evan oh yeah, we're both former Canucks. But anyway, so that's number five. Number four, we've got the Tampa Bay Lightning. And for this one, I think this stems mainly from the fact that there was two grueling playoff series, right? Like that, yeah. that's what sparks a lot of rivalries, especially modern day rivalries. And keep in mind, that is a, a big distinction in this power ranking. We are talking modern day rivalries. Um, I think you look at, you know, what we just witnessed between Toronto and Tampa, you know, for, for two straight seasons in the playoffs there, Tampa got the best of Toronto on one Toronto got the best of Tampa in the other. And throughout the, both of those, they were hard fought series. They were entertaining series. They were fantastic. Um, and they were pretty aggressive. Like he, you ended up getting a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, aggressive nature things happening throughout the games and, and it spills out into the regular season too. Another must-watch game whenever it's Toronto and, and Tampa. So I think that they safely go in there at number four. Yeah, and just even the battles in the Atlantic Division standings, right? Like it's always the Leafs and Lightning very close to each other, whether it's Tampa this year trying to keep track on Toronto and trying to maybe leapfrog them, Toronto past years trying to catch Tampa. And then just also that realization halfway through the year that it was going to be Tampa, Toronto in the first round. So every single time those two teams played against each other, it was like playoff preview number yeah. two out yeah. of four because we like had so many of those games. Luke Shen versus Pat Maroon. Mm. You had who was the guy who Morgan Riley two years ago beat the living piss out of him? Oh, I can't yeah. remember. Was, oh, per- I I was it Nick Perbix? No, it was maybe it was a veteran defenseman, potentially, but he beat the tar off of him. I remember it was in the corner. I was in the game. It was like was game he, one or was game it Jan two. Ruda? Maybe it was Ruda, actually. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it just beat the piss out of him. Yeah. It was it was like I've never seen Mo that angry before. Um, but that's what the playoffs brings out of you. And I think obviously that is carried over uh two years later there's still some some hatred there between these two squads and these two teams. All right, third. Who's the third place team here when it comes to the five biggest rivals, Dave? Well, you got to go with the Ottawa Senators. Yeah. yeah. Two reasons. One, locked on Senators. They can't they can't resist bringing up the Leafs. They can't. Well, they, they, they have huge numbers whenever they bring up the Leafs. It just it pumps their numbers up. That's why. That's what, that's what we live here for. If it's not to pump our own numbers, it's to help the other guys because that's what the Leafs do. They help all the other teams in the league that struggle. That's right. That's right. Go to an Ottawa Senators game. Who is paying money for those tickets? Not Sens fans. Leaf fans. 80% of the buildings in blue and white in Ottawa. It's insane. But that that's was my build, point. <laughs> that's what builds the rivalry, right? That's why Sens, the Senators fans and the players – absolutely hate it they cannot stand it and then there's obviously history right like you and i grew up on the battle of ontario the true battle of ontario and it hasn't really been there we thought maybe it was gonna return this year um hasn't quite but you know now that they've got a goalie and and they've got a new coach uh that i like they've got a you know good uh, Pierre Dorian's out. <laughs> like yeah. got a, a good, you know, group nucleus. They're more top. than just a team this year. They're more than just a team this year. They're more than just a team. So I mean, obviously the Senators uh, still one of the biggest rivals for uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. If not for you know the Battle of Ontario, um, you know, just there's so much history there and the fans. The fans just this and also fight. Ridley Ridley Gregg just being like. Yes. Like, like that moment was like that's Battle of Ontario esque. Yeah. That was that's another Battle of Ontario esque. Another situation where Morgan Riley <laughs> actually went 
Another short mm-hmm. fuse moment done on Morgan Riley. Basically, we could just say, who are the five teams that Morgan Riley hates the most? And that's pretty much what our power ranking. Should have had him on the to. show to get him to do it. We got to get him. I'll send, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll send least PR a note. We'll see if we can get uh, Morgan Riley. I, I doubt it, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, who are the top two biggest rivals for the Maple Leafs right now? We'll tell you next. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you. We are continuing with the Friday Five Pack. Take a look at the Maple Leafs' five biggest modern day rivals. To recap, five through three so far, we've got the Edmonton Oilers at number five. Number four is the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then the Ottawa Senators, the Battle of Ontario, coming in as the third biggest rivalry for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Coming in at number two. Now, I will say this. I'm not even going to say number two. I'm going to say number one and two, okay? Because Dave and I differ on who the bigger rival is. So I think we need help from you you listeners. I believe you do need to tell us. So I believe that the Boston Bruins are the bigger modern day rivalry. And I think that's the key word in the sentence there is modern day rivalry. Dave still thinks it's the Montreal Canadiens. I don't know who's right because they're both very much big rivals. It's like a one, a one B realistically. I think we can both agree with that, but we need you guys to let us know who the biggest rival of the Maple Leafs is right now in 2024. Is it the Toronto, uh, the Boston Bruins or the Montreal Canadians? We need to hear from you, but we're going to make our case. We're both going to make our case. Mm -hmm. So why do you think it should be the Montreal Canadians at one and Boston Bruins at two? And I'm going to leave and leave the history out of it because I've been to and I finally got my chance to be in the building for a Toronto Montreal game. And like there's a good semblance of Habs fans that go to these games. And there is that there is that genuine hate between these two teams. Like Montreal can be the worst team in the league. We have seen them be the worst team in the league. And yet the few games that they actually show up for are against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, part of that is also because the Leafs always play down to their opponent, especially when they're absolutely dreadful, like the Habs have been lately. But it's also just, I think, realization from the organization in Montreal that Toronto is our biggest rival. We cannot let this team off the hook, even when we might not be as strong as them. And like you've seen it. All those games have been rather, relatively close. And that there's just that desire from the fan base. They don't, the one game the Leafs do not want, Leafs fans do not want to lose is against Montreal. Like Ottawa is close, but I think Montreal still holds that special part. Like I do not ever want to see a Habs win against the Leafs. Oh, but you want to see Bruins wins against the Leafs? Is that what you're saying? That's what I heard. No. I I mean, I kind of expect more Bruins wins against the Leafs just because of how. At least struggle to beat the Bruins, but isn't that the reason why the Bruins are more of a rival? You know, like the 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 Leafs Canadians, it's more of like a, a big brother little brother kind of rivalry where it's like, yeah, I mean, this is obviously a team that you don't want to lose to, and uh, but it's just they're they're not a factor into you know the playoffs right now. I think that's that's my biggest dis- distinction here is the Canadians. Yes, they they typically get the better of Toronto. But there's no playoff history there of well, okay. Besides, I guess the the bubble series that that clearly is is mm-hmm. there, and Montreal did win. But Boston, I mean, they they've got what three, four uh, modern day series wins against Toronto. Like they had what the three in a row there right before the pandemic, and then uh, this past year beat them in seven games. Like that tight, like that is why I think that the Boston Bruins. And whenever you think about heartbreak, what do you think of Dave? What do you think of? Uh, do you really want me to have to think? <laughs> My heart already will tell you it is Boston because of what I've, what we've experienced. Exactly. Last years. I, Boston, I do get that. Yeah. It was four one the collapse of 2013, right? That's what you always think about when you think about modern day Maple Leaf heartbreak, and these two teams hate each other. These two fan bases hate each other, and it's the playoffs that breeds that hatred. Like it really, really is. Like for years, the Maple Leafs and Flyers 
were a big time rivalry because they were meeting together in the playoffs, right? And now it's like the Boston Bruins and Leafs always somehow get to to play each other in the postseason. Um, and, and and honestly, it just it breeds that hatred in within them. I truly, truly believe that modern day, it's the Boston Bruins. Like I hate the Bruins. I'm not saying I'm like there's never a time where I think it's more so Brad Marchand. Right, yeah, that's probably what fuels it quite a bit, right? And it's also just like you look at the least should be the better team when you look at how these two rosters stack up. To but it's always now, now, but like yeah. in the past, right? When yeah, Bergeron, there's been Bergeron, when Bergeron, Chara, all those guys were there. Krejci, right. it was a little more, a little more of a balance. But like this past year, especially, yeah, you could say there was qu- that. There was that hatred there. There was that desire. And yeah, when when Pasternak scored that OT goal, just the absolute just crushing. I, why am I doing this? Why am I bringing this up? Well, game seven overtime. Are you saying that yeah. that, you know, game seven overtime to the Boston Bruins? Uh, another loss. I'm, man, I think I'm really putting myself in the. I think this is one of those like come to the other side moments. Is like acknowledging your like, the Bruins. You make the better point in that the because of that playoff rivalry, especially this year. I think that's that's ultimately what creates the rivalries nowadays. Is is more mm. so like that seven games where you go up against one another, like seven straight games or best yeah. of seven, and it allows hatred to brew, and then it just continues into the following season, and then they play again in the playoffs, and then it continues into the following season, and again and again. I mean, that's that's what, four times now that this Matthews and Marner you know, team has had to play the Boston Bruins in the playoffs, and it's four times that they've been eliminated by this group. I mean, it's it's just it's so frustrating to have a team like this go in there and just beat you every single time. It's got to be so so mm-hmm. fun. Like, yeah, the Montreal Canadiens might do in the regular season, but then the Maple Leafs will rattle off three, four wins after that. All right, no big deal. Well, the Boston Bruins beat the Maple Leafs. The season's over, right? So it's like, oh, it's so much worse, so much worse in my opinion. No, that's fair. And this year, I'm I'm sure many people. We'll love nothing more than to see the Leafs actually have, find success against Boston, especially in the regular season, because that has also been an issue the last few years as well. And the Boston Bruins, uh, was Jack Edwards? Is that his name? Yep, he's gone. Yeah, but uh, he's still, I mean, just, oh, yeah. oh, just oh. so oh. Fr- so frustrating. Oh, he made the Bruins the most unlikable team whenever you want, because – if you were watching a lot of Bruins games where the Leafs aren't playing and there was a Bruins game on TV, it was always Jack Edwards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, happy he's he's done and gone. Yeah, he was good at his job. He stirred the pot, which is ultimately what you should do as a media personality. But uh, the 31 other fan bases, not the biggest fan of him. But I don't think he really cared. <laughs> Uh, so there's our list. So we've got the Edmonton Oilers at five, Tampa Bay at four, the Ottawa Center is at three, and then we've got a tie here for one A, one B between the Montreal Canadiens and the Boston Bruins. <laughs> you, the listeners, are going to have to settle this one for us. Let us know in the comments down below, or reach out to us on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck for myself at D underscore Morisuti for Dave. Let us know who's the bigger rival, modern day rival for the Maple Leafs, the Boston Bruins, or the Montreal Canadiens. That'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms to receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. And follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday. Enjoy the weekend. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.